Good morning. Time for some chapter two. So for all this stuff, chapters two and three are really going to form the foundation for static. So be sure and take the time to get a solid foundation on this stuff. Don't hesitate to ask questions. You can text screenshots of problems where you get stuck. And um, if you find other resources online to share with everybody, I'll give you bonus participation points if you post links to good resources in the discussion forum. Okay, so we're going to start out with addition of planar forces or two-dimensional forces, X and Y directions. I think you've probably done adding forces by components, splitting in everything into X and Y components in physics. So we will go through that again. And then one different method that maybe you haven't done as much, which is putting the vectors head to tail, making a triangle out of it, and just using some law of sines, law of cosines to walk around that triangle. We'll then go through some equilibrium ideas. So for statics, the point of statics is forces add to zero. And then we will get into some three-dimensional problems. Okay, so here's an example problem. And if you look at what is in the book, this scenario happens over and over again, where you have three vectors all coming together and maybe you know some information like angles and one of the tensions and you wanna figure out what the rest of these are. One thing to notice for all of these problems is that these vectors are concurrent. And that means that they all come together at a single point. For chapter two, we're not worried about rotational motion yet. And what this means is that we're purely adding forces together. We're not worried about moments or torques yet. So that's one thing to notice. And three vectors, this is kind of what you can solve for these two-dimensional problems. So we're gonna be looking at forces in the X and the Y direction, adding to zero. And that means we have two equations and two unknowns for this. So it's very common to have three vectors and two of those vectors are unknown just because we've got two equations, two unknowns. Okay, a couple different ways to do this. One way is to move these vectors around and add them head to tail, head to tail, and then we can use the law of sines or the law of cosines to walk around the sides of this thing. For this, there's a couple different ways that you can add them together. You can put them on the right-hand side, you can put them on the left-hand side. So parallelogram, either way, you're just worried about the magnitude of the vector, so the length of the thing, and also the direction it is pointing in. A lot of your mechanics classes, it's all going to be vectors. And whether those vectors are forces like tensions or velocities, we'll look at angular motion. Moments are actually a vector as well. They describe the axis of rotation. But from here on out, it's going to be a lot of adding vectors together. So what we do with forces, keep that in mind. We're going to do that with everything for vectors. So vectors have, again, a magnitude a direction versus scalar properties that only have a magnitude. One of the challenges for adding vectors together is just making sure you have all of those angles correct. So hopefully you can remember a few of those little tricks that you learned in your trig classes. I like to measure things with respect to the vertical or with respect to the horizontal. So pay attention to angles that are all the same that will wrap around. So if I have 30 degrees with respect to the vertical, I can copy that across, right? And that same angle is going to come to the other side. Or same with this 40. So draw a vertical line copy those across and then look for angles that are that are similar to one another. You can also look for things like angles that add up to 180 degrees or angles that add up to 90 degrees. So I can fill in the third value for this triangle by figuring out this is 30 and 40 or 
all of the angles add to 180 degrees. And you get that angles adding to 100 degrees because of these relationships here. So if you have two angles for a triangle, you've got the third angle as well. If I have one side and three angles for the triangle, if you remember back to your trig, what you use to solve this is the law of sines. So all of the angles on one side, just use those ratios. If you have two sides and the angle between the sides, that's when you would use the law of cosines. So this is our view. This is the law of sines. We're going to take the length of each side of that triangle, which corresponds to the magnitude of the force that's in here, and look at the angle that is opposite of that side. So see how this 40 degrees is just on the opposite side of this 50, so that's the ratio that goes together. And that ratio of the length of the side divided by the sine of the adjacent side, that is the law of sines. And once you have this guy, you can walk through and get all of the sides of the triangle very quickly. This is, I think, a lot faster often than breaking things into components because you have just kind of a one-line solution you have that ratio and you've got it. So there's the tension two and tension three. You can just walk right around that law of signs. One of the things I like to do is to set this up in Excel. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste some of these diagrams over there and walk through some an example problem in Excel. So for all of this stuff, you will need a calculator, and I think Excel is a great calculator because it can store values of numbers, and it's just a nice, a nice way to keep track of things. So this is how it works. If you put a number into a cell, you can say equals that cell, and it's start with an equal sign, and it's it's a calculator. So hopefully this will be, I've got some other videos for um, Excel tutorials, if that would help you. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up a little table that will have the lengths of each of these sides. So let's say I have tension one, tension two, and tension three. And then I'm going to have the angle that's adjacent to one, theta one angle adjacent to the tension two and the angle that's adjacent to tension three. And I'm gonna just walk through this calculation in Excel. So adjacent from one, that would be 40 degrees. Adjacent to two, that would be 30 degrees. And then adjacent from three is 110. Excel likes to use radians, so I'm going to go ahead and switch all of these guys over to radians. Nice thing, once I have this equation in for one of the cells, I can grab the lower right-hand corner here and just pull it down. So here is degrees over here and radians. For the law of sines, I'm going to be using this ratio over and over again. So for whichever side I have, I'll go ahead and get the ratio of that side divided by the sine of the adjacent angle. So I'm going to make another little cell up here that is T1 divided by sine theta 1. So I'm just going to have that, that ratio to make calculations easier. And I'm not typing in the number here. I'm going to type in the cell. So that, that first letter, I'm in column G, and I am in row 3 here to get that 50. So here is my tension, and I'm going to divide it by the sine of the angle. And remember that Excel likes to use radians, so I'm going to click on the radians there. Okay, so now that I have that ratio, 5 over sine 40, to get... My next tension, I'm just going to bring up the angle that goes with that tension over here, and that will get my tension too. So I'm going to say equals the ratio 
times the angle that's adjacent to 2. And then I'm again going to say the ratio times the angle that goes with tension 3. And that will give me that 38 and 73. And the nice thing about this is in the future, I can actually go back and have this automatically calculate for me. So if I kind of label this as this is what was given, and this is what I have solved for. If I have a different tension one, let's say this is 100 instead of 50, it will update all of those calculations for me. So I can easily modify and see a few of these things for some different scenarios. Okay, so that is using the law of signs and setting a few things up with, with Excel. It's probably nice to, to go in here and do a, a little bit of formatting. Okay, so that was an example using the law of signs. Now let's look at an alternative solution, and that is using components. And this is probably what you've seen, I think, in some physics classes. So you're going to look at everything in the x direction, take this tension, and see what's tugging to the left here and what's tugging up. So you can see the x direction that's opposite of that 30 degrees. So this side of it is going to be 50 sine 30. And then adjacent to that 30 degrees, that's going to be the cosine. So hypotenuse times cosine 30. Use that SOHCAHTOA rule. And here is the other side. So the tension on this piece of it, we, are, we don't know the number of this yet. We don't know how large it is that we can at least write an equation for it, that this tension is going to be opposite that 40 degrees. And this piece that's tugging up here, that's adjacent, so it's going to be T2 cosine 40 degrees. And these two forces tugging up from both of these tensions are going to be equal and opposite to the weight of this light hanging down. Okay, so once we have everything broken into X and Y components using SOHCAHTOA, the next piece is to apply equilibrium equations. So for statics, the force is in the X direction. So what's tugging here to the right, T2 sine 40, is going to be equal and opposite to what's tugging to the left here, T1. So this is going to be the 50 sine 30, so that's 25. We'll say the left is negative, so negative 25, and to the right is positive. And the same thing for y. So everything in the y direction is also going to add to zero. So the tension pulling up is this cosine piece of it. So that's the adjacent to this angle is tugging up. And that's going to be equal to the weight of the light holding down. So there's our forces in the y direction. And cranking through this thing, so negative 25 is equal to T2 sine 40. We can figure out what our tension is in the orange cable. And looking at the y direction, we can then find what the weight of our light is, or the third tension that's pulling straight down. In Excel, let me show you what this would look like in Excel. So I've gone ahead and I've used my snipping tool to pull this diagram into Excel. I think this everybody should have this tool on their computer. If you just type snip down here, this will get you the snipping tool and you just grab any section of your screen and you can edit copy, edit paste that in there. There's also drawing tools in Excel that are really nice that you can draw vectors and stuff in here. If this drawing tool is not showing up for you, you can go to File and then Options, and it's right here under Customize Ribbon, and you just have to make sure that this little check mark is, is checked for drawing tools. Okay, so for checking out looking at the X direction, looking at the Y direction. I'm going to add a few columns to my spreadsheet here. So just to give myself some room, I'm going to insert a row. 
and insert a row here. And I'm going to make myself a column for what's happening in the x direction and a column for what's happening in the y direction. And then we're going to see if these guys can add to zero or equilibrium as a last step here. And it, it really helps. I will want you to include diagrams for your written work. So this is where you see if something is negative going to the left or positive going to the right. So kind of think through how you want to define your coordinate system here. So let's go ahead and make positive to the right and we'll make positive going up. So this is positive. Okay, escape gets out of that drawing tool if you get stuck in there. Let's go ahead and look at tension one. So we're going to the left and the first piece of it, I'm gonna take the hypotenuse and multiply that hypotenuse times sine of that 30 degrees. So here is that angle. And you can see that we have 25. I need to make that negative. So I'm going to go ahead. Whatever you type into here, it's also going to show up here. And these, these problems have so many little details that you probably won't get things in correctly the first time around. And Excel, another for Excel is it's just easier to go back and fix those little mistakes. Make sure that everything is in the right direction. Okay, so there is this green vector split into its X component, which is going in the negative direction, and its Y component, which is pulling up. If you want, you can go ahead and, and format these, center them. Okay, next up, let's take this second tension and split it up into how much is in the x and the y direction. So you can see where that 40 degrees is. So this angle right here is the same as this angle right here. These are these are similar similar angles. So the sine piece that's going to be opposite of that 40 and cosine piece is going to be adjacent to that 40. So I'll go ahead and say equals, click on T2, and this is going to be opposite of the 40 degrees. So I'm going to click on where that radians is. And then for the Y component, that is adjacent. So I'm clicking on the tension times cosine, and it's adjacent to that 40 degrees. Okay, the last piece, so this third tension is straight down in the y direction, so we'll call down is negative, so I'm going to just say negative of this. And the final check here, so if we have everything in, entered correctly, I should be able to add everything in the x direction. You can use the arrows on your number keypad to get these in if it's not letting you click on it with your mouse. So that's adding everything in the x direction. That's times 10 to the negative 15. That's, it's pretty much zero. You can see a little bit of um, kind of <laughs> the limits of, of your computer storing some numbers. So let's go ahead and but that, it adds to zero in the x direction, and for the y direction, if I copy that equation over, it adds to zero in the y direction as well. So we know, yay, we did all of this correctly because everything adds to zero. So there's our equilibrium. Just as a final comparison, let's go ahead and compare these two methods. So. To add forces by components, we take each of these vectors, we use the angles to split things into how much is tugging in the x or horizontal direction, and then how much is 
pegging in the vertical or Y direction. And then we can go through and add these guys to make sure that everything in the X direction is tugging equal and opposite and everything in the Y direction is equal and opposite. If we used the triangle method, so we just added these vectors head to tail, head to tail, it is the same thing. If these vectors form a closed loop, that means that everything in the X direction is equal and opposite, and also everything in the Y direction is also equal and opposite. The closed loop method, I think there's a little bit less calculations here. There's just kind of a one line for law of signs, and you have it, versus the components. You have to break everything into X and Y components, and then add everything in the Y direction and X. So it's, it's up to you which method you want to use. I think it's good to be familiar with both. It's kind of nice to solve things two different ways and you can, be, you can be confident that your answer is correct when you walk through it both, both methods. Okay, part of your homework, what I would like you to do is to not just solve for something, but to also modify it and think through design aspects. So I will have you create modified problems that you post in the discussion forum where you change things up a bit. So think through, what if there is some other force that's added to this? If the wind blows on it, if there's a bunch of birds sitting on the wires, maybe there's an ice storm and everything gets coated with ice and adds to the load on here. So thinking through all those different possibilities. And the last step is, of course, finding the best way to support this weight and thinking through what's the best angle to use here if you had that choice for your cables. A good modification would be to maybe think about different angles, plug in a different number for the weights. Um, I'd like to Think through minimum, maximum, and um, design. The, what's the best design? That's kind of the best, the best modified problems. And I will use the best modified problem on the exam. So the discussion forum with these mod props will become a place to study and see example solutions, share ideas, and also study for the exam, because I will pick problems out of those discussion forums for your exam. Walking through this, what does a triangle look like if I have one side as 50 versus one side as 100? So you can, you can imagine that you've, you've just made the triangle a little bit larger, right? So that would be one modification is just a kind of see how everything grows together. Maybe the angle stays the same, but those ratios would all get larger as you change those tension. What is another thing that we could look at? Maybe we have the same weight. So we're going to see the best way to support this weight. And we would just change the angles that these tensions are at. So if you can think about changing those angles, it's really about stretching the triangle out. So as these tensions get more vertical, what is happening to the magnitude of the tension in those cables? Can you see what happens as I stretch and push this triangle around? So let's say T3 is 50. The best case scenario, if these two guys are both straight up, then they would each hold half of that 50 newtons. And as you stretch those out, you add the X component in there, which in turn creates a larger tension in those cables. So the more they are stretched out in the horizontal direction, the more X force is added into it, the larger the tension in that cable is. When you look at an angle and tensions and structures, you're looking at that ratio of what's happening in the X and Y direction. And if your load is in the Y direction, 
You want as much of that support to be in the same direction as a load as possible. It's just one of those things that what's happening in the X direction here is the structure is just fighting against itself. There's there's no load in the X direction. It's not doing any kind of productive work in that direction. It's just fighting against itself. And of course, you do have to suspend the light across the street. So there is some kind of a horizontal um, requirement for this design here. But keep that in mind that if you want to support something in the Y direction, the best scenario is for those cables to be in the Y direction. Something that might be interesting to modify here would be to watch the value of this tension as a function of these angles. And that's another thing that we could do in Excel. So here we are over in Excel, and we, if we think through what would relate the tension in these cables to the angle that these cables are hanging with, we can use the law of signs again. So we have the weight that we are supporting is adjacent to 180 minus two of these angles. Let's go ahead and make this symmetrical. So the same angle on each side of this thing. And what we have here is the weight, three divided by 180 minus two theta is then going to be equal to the tension and we'll keep it symmetrical. So this will, the tension will be the same on both sides divided by sine of that angle. Rearranging, we have an equation for tension that is a function of the weight that we are supporting and the angle that those cables are at. So it might be an interesting thing to graph this out in Excel and think through the best design of how to hang this cable. Okay, so what I'm going to do is set up something that, let's go ahead and, and say the weight of this is 50 newtons, and I'm going to insert a symbol here. So this is if you want to actually put in an angle sign. Okay, we'll have this in degrees and radians, and we want to plot the tension in that cable as a function of the angle that it is held at. So just a little bit of formatting here. Okay, what angle can this guy go between? So if they're straight up and down, that angle will be zero, and then as I pull more and more in the horizontal direction, let's say the maximum angle it won't quite reach 90, but that's where it's headed towards. So we're looking at something between 0 to 90 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and just start with 0, and I'll choose, I don't know, an increment of 5 degrees. So 5, 10, 15. If you have some kind of a sequence like this that you want to copy over, just highlight a bit of it and then drag that corner down and it'll fill it in. <clears throat> Once again, Excel uses radians rather than degrees, so we're going to switch that over to radians. I could have taken that and multiplied it by pi divided by 180. That would give me the same, the same thing. Okay, so there is my angle, and if I was to calculate the tension for each of those angles, this is where I'm going to put in this equation right here. So my tension is equal to sine theta, and I'm going to use the radians on here, times my weight. If I want to keep coming back to the same cell and not have that copied down as I copy the equation down, just add a dollar sign to that. And that will keep that held in place. And then that's going to be divided by sine of 180 degrees or pi minus 2 times this radians. Okay. 
So hopefully I have that equation in there correctly. I'm going to actually bump this first degrees up so that it's not quite zero. And yeah, that is what the tension should be for zero degrees. So if this is zero, if they're both pulling straight up, 25, 25 would hold up 50. Okay, copying this thing down. And let's just look to see what trend we have. So as this angle gets larger and larger, as we're stretching this triangle bigger and bigger, we can see that tension shoot through the roof. And again, instead of going all the way to 90, let's take it to 89. So what we can do is highlight, control, highlight, and insert a graph just to see what this trend is. And man, after 80 degrees, we get huge, huge tensions in here. And this is it's a tug of war in the x direction is what's happening at this side. We can go ahead and add some axis titles here. So this is the degrees. That's what's going on in the angle. And then this is the tension in our cables. So zooming in on this graph and just thinking about, so here's zero degrees. Each of those tensions is going to pull and carry half of the load. And then as we increase that angle, so here is 60 degrees all the way up to 90 degrees. So it becomes more and more of a tug of war in the x direction and that large force in the x direction makes the tension kind of shoot through the roof. So anyways, this is an example of a modified problem where you're not just solving what's in the book, but you're thinking through the design and engineering aspects of what is happening when I'm changing that angle around, what would be the best way to support this weight. And this is, this is why the Golden Gate Bridge is so tall. So see how as you make this taller, as more of that tension is in the y direction, in the same direction as the weight, you save yourself from kind of these, these huge forces that the, the structure is fighting against itself in. And there's no exact point on this graph where you can say, oh, don't go past 60 degrees. It's It does look like there's... <laughs> There's kind of an exponential growth here after 60 or 70. So you can eyeball it and say, yeah, we're not too, too bad until you better not pass the 60 degrees because then you're just, you're really putting a lot of force into those tensions. Okay, so hopefully that was a good intro to two-dimensional forces, looking at method of components, looking at head to tail, head to tail, and also changing things around a bit and thinking through not just the answer of problems, but the design considerations for this.